This week marks 10 years since the disappearance of three brothers from our area. Tanner, Alexander and Andrew Skelton would be 15, 17 and 19 years old now. He's never been charged with killing the boys, but police believe their father, John, did something terrible to them back in 2010 and he could get out of prison soon, taking with him a piece to a puzzle that may never be solved. <laughs> never thought that we would still be sitting here at, at 10 years. I thought this would be resolved by now. But here we are. There's a lot that they've missed, a lot that Tanya Zuvers will spend another Thanksgiving without her boys. She lives every day not knowing whether they're dead or alive or will walk through the front door. Realistically, I know that chances are my boys are living in a better world than we live in. And that gives me comfort. Um, as a Christian, I know that I will be reunited with them someday. Um, but I still want that knock on the door that says, Hey, Mom, we're home. Investigators who know the evidence agree the boys are likely dead. Think about what it's like as a mother to come here and have this memorial place. Former Morency Police Chief Larry Weeks. There were some early indicators within the first week or so that I, that led me to believe something nefarious had happened with the boys. It wasn't going to be a matter of finding them you know, alive somewhere, it was going to be more, much more nefarious, something horrible had happened to him. The boy's father, John Skelton, claimed he gave them to an underground group to protect them, but police never found evidence of the group. John is serving a 15-year sentence for child endangering and kidnapping, but could get released early. People in Morency, a tight-knit, tiny town, remember the tragedy vividly. So much so, they keep the brothers missing posters in their windows all these years later. I think if I was him, I'd be afraid to get out of prison. He needs to stay there. <laughs> That's my opinion. Or he, and he needs to tell someone what really happened, what he did with them. John, what did you do to your kid? And therein lies the problem. Investigators say John's never told anyone the truth about what happened to the boys, and tips have dried up over the years. Hey, as law enforcement, we want tips that are going to be able to help, you know, bring some closure to this. With a release on the horizon, Tanya and investigators believe it's unlikely John will ever confess. So it's up to investigators to uncover more evidence to keep him behind bars. Worst case scenario. He killed them. I don't know, y you know, I, I, it goes through my mind. Does he think that he's only going to do the 15 years and he's going to get out and they're never going to pursue him? I think it's there, you know, I think there's enough information there that, um, you know, as I've said all along, I think this is a murder case. Investigators won't reveal the evidence they've collected or whether it's enough for a murder charge, but they believe the answer to this mystery still lies in where John was in his blue Dodge Caravan on Black Friday, 2010. His cell phone left his house about 4.29 a.m. on that morning. We have an indication that uh, the phone pinged down near Holiday City, Ohio around 5, 5.05, and then he's back home at 6.46. So you're talking about, you know, hour and a half or so that he's got to do whatever he wants. And this 
is a very large, vast country area full of cornfields, rivers. It's difficult when you look at that vast area and the time he had to say, well, this is where the, the boys are at, or this is what he did with them. In my mind, that is where the tips need to come from. We need to know what he was doing during that window of time. Obviously, it'd be very hard for people to think back 10 years and be able to say for sure they saw that van, but stranger things have happened. It's that same dream Tanya holds on to all these years later. We still have hope. I still have hope that in my lifetime, preferably sooner rather than later, I will have answers. You can help Zuvers get those answers she so desperately needs. If you saw John Skelton and the boys on Thanksgiving or Black Friday of 2010, call 1-800-SPEAK-UP. I reached out to John Skelton multiple times in prison, but he didn't respond. His sentence is up in 2025, but he's eligible for parole in two years. If you'd like to see my full interview with Tanya Zuvers, click on this story on WTOL.com. I'm Melissa Andrews.